You are watching your weekend edition of Shaw Arts and Entertainment. I am your host, Curtis Anderson. Now, it's been a busy week, and we've got a packed show for you today, but we're going to start by going back in time, back to Wednesday, May 5th. It was Mick Happy Day, and myself and Salicardo were on hand at the 51st Street location, donating our time and efforts. We were working the drive through we were refilling coffees, we were handing out cake. You can see the visuals of it right now all in an effort to raise money for the local Ronald McDonald House before the shift ended. I had the opportunity to talk to both the assistant manager and the manager about where all the funds were going. All right, we are midway through my time here at Mick Happy Day. I'm having a lot of fun. I, it's, it's like I said before, this is kind of where it all began for me before I went off and uh, became the local television personality. I came up through the ranks of the restaurant industry. And is it coming back? I'm, I'm, I'm here with uh, Mitch and Michelle, the assistant manager and store manager. How am I doing? Am I, am I keeping up? You are. You're handling the coffees quite well. You're you're inviting them back. You're. I'd hire you. I'd definitely hire you there. So. Good to know. Uh, is this a busy day? A not so busy day? Could I could I handle it? Like apparently it's going to go crazy here in a second when the lunch rush hits. Am I am I going to be able to make it? You might need some help. It's going to be quite busy. We do, you know, sometimes 130 cars to the drive through in one hour. So. You might need some experience help. All right, we are raising money for the Ronald McDonald House. Talk a little bit about McHappy Day and its past and the difference it's made. McHappy Day has always been the funnest day of the year for us. Um, we spend the whole day raising money towards um, some sort of children's charity. Last year and this year has gone towards the Saskatchewan Ronald McDonald House here in Saskatoon, which um, houses families um, who are dealing with children um, who are seeking some medical help here in, in Saskatoon. So it's very important to me and very important to us and our staff that uh, we do the best we can for that charity today, this year. How about you, sir? Do you look forward to McHappy Day each and every year? Seeing these, do, do a lot of uh, like TV and radio personalities come out, do, do they just straight up fail? Like, can they not keep up with the rush? Is that kind of rewarding to we sit actually, back and watch these guys kind of fail? It's actually not too bad. The customers are pretty forgiving, but uh, some of them do. Uh, we have to do kind of shuffle them around because no. we're getting backed up. But uh, like I said this morning, you handled uh, it well. You did uh, everything that you needed to, so we could tell you that you had some experience before, and uh, it is fun. It is a blast today. We'll so. see how I do with Lunch Rush. I want to I take you guys back in time. It was 2005, and this was the first time I raised money for the Ronald McDonald House. I was in a media charity race, and check that out. Former co-worker Mitch McNichol and I ran in a race. <laughs> We're going to show some footage right now against other media personalities, and I believe we took home two grand for the Ronald McDonald House. So all this money being raised, where is it going to go? I understand they're expanding. They're trying to expand the Ronald McDonald House. Who wants to jump in here? Yeah, absolutely. I believe they have, um, they're looking to expand because um, there are constantly, consistently turning people away because they don't have enough room in the house to um, house everybody so that's you know very disappointing and very heartbreaking when you have to turn someone away who's um, dealing with something very difficult at the time so they're looking to expand and that's what we're looking to help them with another message we need to get out there to wrap this up uh, you don't have to wait till May 5th to support yes. the Ronald McDonald house how can people stay active and uh, you know donate money help out where do you send them if they want to help out with the Ronald McDonald house here in Saskatoon at the head officer actually uh, they can come to any restaurant, ask about that. We can give them the number for Angela. She's the one that usually deals with the donations. They call in, say the donation amount, and then go from there. Angela will direct them better. The number for there is 374-5566. So. All right, I want to thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm getting in the mental <laughs> mode to do the lunch rush. This has been a lot of fun. Again, it's like circle of life. I'm back to where it all began <laughs> for me. At, true story, I met my wonderful wife working in a restaurant just like this one. One of my best friends, Jonathan McNeil, best friend in the world, I met working in a restaurant just like this one. I'm having a good time, you guys. Final words, McHappy Day 2010. Let's just have fun and raise as much money as we can. Kudos to that. And there's Caitlin. She's doing a heck of a job. <laughs> hey, Caitlin. She's my, she's my trainer. Earlier this week, it was announced that one Saskatchewan author who has written a quote substantial body of literary work of a high order will have the opportunity to collect 10 grand and a one-of-a-kind Dorothy Knowles painting this September as the first annual Cheryl and Henry Kloppenberg Award for Literary Excellence will be awarded to a deserving local writer. 
<laughs> frankly, they've got probably a better reputation outside of Saskatchewan than they do here. We've got phenomenal writers, and as indicated um, by, by um, Bob Calder in his comments, we have a number of writers currently in this province who are national award winners. Writers must be Canadian citizens or permanent residents who have lived in Saskatchewan the last five years or have lived in Saskatchewan at least 10 years of their writing careers. Their books may have been published anywhere in the world and the award is not genre specific. The Kloppenbergs feel this is a much needed step forward as the Saskatchewan writers as a whole have been insufficiently recognized. I think it's a good thing to identify among the collection of writers we have active in Saskatchewan those who have succeeded. Those who have succeeded in obtaining the confidence of their fellow writers and we want to see that writers with Saskatchewan roots are formally recognized. And it hasn't happened so far unless people have left the province. The nominations can come from publishers, writing organizations, and the general public. Forums are available online at www.skwriters.com with a June 30th deadline. Tonight at the Roxy on Broadway, Scatterheart comes to Saskatoon. Now this is a band from Vancouver who are rebuilding the whole Queen glam rock era. It's a fantastic show. Now while I didn't have an opportunity to talk to them, Brad Kelly from our sister station in Edmonton recently sat down with Scatterheart and filed this report. She never hides, she never lies, she's beautiful, beautiful. Like many bands before them, Scatterheart is looking to catch your attention not just from their straightforward love rock sounds, but also with glamorous, eye-popping wardrobe. Well, it's, uh, it goes beyond jeans and t-shirts. We're just trying to do something that's, you know, a little classy. It's, it's uh, uh, theatrical and it's, you know, it's done with a bit of a panache and style. So, yeah. And apparently over the pond, it's getting massive response when you wear the wings. Well, people like a show. And in Korea, they really love a show. They yeah. realize, like, I think they, there's a, an anime character, like a, a, an animation character that looks just like me, apparently, but I didn't even know that I had done that. Uh. <laughs> so they realize they know, they know a, a cartoon rock god when they see one, I guess. Rock gods with a mission to bring back the power and majesty that has been missing from the music world for way too long. The quartet was originally three until longtime Biff Naked producer guitarist Doug Fury stepped in to complete the package shortly after they formed in 2007. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's a different vibe. Um, with Biff, uh, it, you know, it was coming from more of a punk rock kind of background, and with this thing, it's, it's a theatrical glam rock kind of thing. And uh, it's a different dynamic as well because this is uh, Biff is a solo artist, and I was playing, uh, you know, guitar backup kind of musician but with this it's four guys and mm. it's a full band kind of you know four guys going for it so it's cool we gotta be brave. We've gotta resist it night and day. you have uh, two of the members uh, that are knee deep into production as well which is probably quite an asset for the band yeah for sure I mean we can make records the way we want them to sound and we can make them when we want to make them uh, we have control over that which is mm. very cool and the rest, as they say, is history. Since the release of their full-length CD, The Master Plan, well, they've been performing across the country for over a year now. Just phenomenal uh, experience. The, the fans have been fantastic. Yeah. Well, That's I know great. with a couple of producers in the band, you're looking at the next project. I know that for sure. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. I mean, we're going to finish off the summer. We're going to tour Canada another couple of times. Hopefully, we'll get to Korea again. And mm. uh, we're going to do some festivals. We're actually doing uh, Haida Gwaii. We're doing this festival called Edge of the World. We're headlining two nights there. Mm. And it is literally the edge of the world that we're really excited for it. Check out the show that literally takes flight. Brad Kelly, Shaw TV, Capital Region. And taking a look at other programs coming up here on Shaw TV. This week, Strip Down broke down the provincial walls as Ontario's own Amanda Riom stopped by and took to the Strip Down stage. Sunday is your last opportunity to check it out, and I suggest to take a look at her video blog. It's a rare look behind the scenes of Strip Down. It's pretty funny stuff. And